Board of Direct Directors regular meeting, Thursday, February 12, 2015, at 1808 hours. Director Fox, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty for all. All right, thank you. Let the record show that Director Branch is joining us by speakerphone, and uh, Director Wesneski called in was uh, one was unable to attend via speakerphone. Um, additions to the agenda, I would like to add one item under the Fire Chief's report. We will be getting a 2014 Wildland Summary Report from Deputy Chief Ware. Any other additions or deletions to the agenda? I just need a motion. Okay, motion to accept the change. So moved. Second. Second. Oh, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. All right. Um, review the January 8th, 2015 regular meeting minutes. take us to the financial matters. Alec? Um, you have, uh, as usual, a summary of our uh, January financials. How close to real are these? Are they still preliminary? Or? The January is preliminary because, and we're making, we, we're about to make some adjustments. All right. Um, and then they'll obviously be subject All to right. the adjustments. Um, but it's close. And we have expenditures of uh, $264,804, and I move that those expend that amount of expenditures be approved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Anything else? Nope. That will take us to the fire chief's report. Okay. Um, January we had 127 calls, which was uh, by far our busiest uh, start to the year ever. Uh, in comparison, last year we had 87 calls for the month. Uh, so um, you know why? I was going to you know um, the biggest the single thing that we've been seeing is an increase in EFS calls. Um, is that because more people have insurance? I would say that's probably. Part of a good part of it. Um, we also are getting uh, a lot more people coming from uh, Conifer Medical Clinic um, and Conifer Medical Center. And in fact, apparently their uh, their business is is booming to the point that they are uh, considering having to move um, because they're they're outgrowing their facility there. So uh, we're definitely seeing a lot more just general activity. And I think that. With the, you know, we're also seeing that in terms of just the number of vehicles on the road, the number of accidents, you know, just everything in general uh, seems to just be taking off. Um, and in fact, for January, not only was it, you know, up uh, up in terms of calls, but uh, we we transported 53 patients uh, during the month, which uh, is our busiest month ever. Uh, the um, you know, prior to that, we'd had uh, 50 calls uh, in a month, uh, and typically, summertime's our busier uh, season uh, for just about everything. So, um, you know, seeing our, our busiest single month in, uh, you know, in the winter was uh, was a little bit unusual, and it did follow an exceptionally busy uh, December as well. Uh, so, uh, we're kind of watching how the trends go. February has kind of dropped back to normal uh, so far, uh, but um, you know, we're at, at our current rate, we're still well ahead of, uh, of any previous year in terms of, of uh, uh, how many calls we're, ro we're rolling. Um, let's see, other things, we've, this is a, 
obviously grant season, so we did get two grants uh, requests in on the um, uh, Colorado uh, Firefighter Safety and Disease Prevention Program, which is the new grant that uh, started in January this year. Um, and then uh, we also did uh, apply for a fire engine and rescue tools through the Assistance to Firefighters Grant and um, also uh, applied for rescue tools through the EMS grant for the state. And now the, the newest grant that just opened uh, three days ago is the um, uh, SAFER grant, the Federal uh, Staffing Grant. And this actually is, even though it's uh, 2015, uh, this has been a, a held over grant that was authorized for 2013. Uh, and, um, you know, they just finally got around to, to uh, putting that out. Um, there's been talk for quite a while over whether or not those, that particular grant program would continue into the future, uh, but uh, this one is guaranteed in that it would, the money was appropriated two years ago and has just been sitting. Uh, that, uh, that grant uh, is a grant to, uh, for hiring, and um, the terms of the grant are essentially 100% uh, uh, funding for all costs associated with the positions for a two-year period, and then no mandate to maintain the positions afterward. Uh, so we're, we're evaluating that um, to see if, uh, if it would be worth doing. Even if uh, we knew that, uh, you know, we would not be continuing those positions past that, uh, the grant period, the, um, you know, that would be a huge benefit to, uh, you know, if we hired a couple of our volunteers for that, that time period, you know, that would be a good thing for our, our citizens in terms of having a couple more on staff, particularly with the amount of, of calls that we're running uh, these days. And obviously it would be good for those individuals in terms of, you know, if we elected not to continue them because, of, you know, we couldn't bring, in, bring that up in the budget, you know, they would, they would be, you know, well ahead toward, uh, you know, obtaining another firefighting job elsewhere after, after doing that. So I think that that's, a, a, you know, looks like a pretty, a pretty solid deal for both, you know, the, the citizens and for, you know, our, our personnel. Um, you know, one of the things that we did see with, you know, obviously with running 127 calls uh, during January, um, that, uh, you know, we were running three calls at a time, on average, four or five days out of every week, and two calls at a time, almost half the time. So uh, we're, you know, with only the, you know, the two on staff, that's meant that, uh, Quite a, quite a few times we've been calling, uh, you know, either delaying calls or calling in mutual aid uh, to pick up those extra calls. And the volunteers did a great job of stepping up uh, during that time frame, but, uh, you know, over the long term, I think we'd have a difficult time uh, continuing to, um, uh, you know, provide that service if, if we do see a call volume continue at that level into the future. Um, we are getting uh, the two tenders next week. Uh, we're flying down on uh, Tuesday, final inspections on uh, Wednesday, and then if everything goes well, we should have them back here by the weekend, and then we'll start working on getting those in service. Uh, we do have uh, the Type 3 engines. Uh, you know, we changed out the rear seats in those, and the first one should be coming back in a couple of days, tomorrow, hopefully. Good. And then uh, the squad truck um, is a couple of weeks out uh, to finish that as well. Um, we've got the nine health fair that we've taken over since uh, Joe Dix uh, uh, moved away. Uh, he was a former volunteer that has been managing the nine health fair for the last several years. And, uh, Jacob Ware has uh, agreed to take that on, so uh, that's going to be um, run from within the department uh, this year at least. And then we've also got uh, Firewise Community, um, two communities that I want to add uh, 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 to that Firewise Communities program. And then the Mountain Home and Garden Show is coming up as well. Uh, the mutual aid agreement that we've been working on, the statewide one, uh, we finally got that back from uh, the state chief's um, uh, legal counsel yesterday. And having reviewed that, along with uh, Gary Brees from the 
uh, uh, state chiefs. Uh, we're going to go ahead and forward that to the, the board there for approval, and we expect that within the next uh, couple of weeks that'll be finalized and ready for signatures, um, and we'll start uh, start to get that around. <coughs> we are still working on the consolidated uh, dispatch uh, system that, um, you know, the, the dispatch center uh, is l really looking like it's, a, it's definitely going to be move ahead. Um, you know, there's pretty much 100% support from the law enforcement agencies that are going to make up the bulk of the funding for the, the program. And uh, with them on board, um, you know, it's pretty much uh, a done deal in terms of uh, that uh, consolidated dispatch ending up uh, there at, at West Metro. Um, we anticipate that for us, we'll be a couple of years out before, uh, before we're on board with that. Uh, largely because, you know, we've got to take care of the infrastructure up here. You know, with all the rest of the area is all on the trunked, linked system with fiber cable and everything. Uh, up here, we're still, you know, kind of behind uh, on the technology for linking the radio systems together. Uh, we did get a grant, uh, I believe I mentioned that before, uh, to pay for the engineering on um, on that, and they did uh, come back a couple of days ago with their proposal, uh, which is that they're estimating between 481,000 and 718,000 to build out the fire si the radio system, basically for all of the foothills areas um, of Jefferson County. Would we stay on VHF? We would stay on VHF with that, but uh, what would what they they would link to 800. Right there, there'll be an 800 link, and they'll also be a link between all of the agencies so that, you know, uh, there won't be separate channels for every, uh, every agency up here. Um, the, and uh, the North Central Region also has indicated that they would be uh, very amenable to funding, um, you know, that project or at least part of that project, uh, you know, as we move ahead. Um, you know, we're looking at you know, between all the agencies involved, probably between fifty and seventy thousand, uh, you know, in infrastructure costs uh, to build that system out. Uh, hopefully, the bulk of that would be paid for with uh, Homeland Security uh, funds. They, that has been one of their main, uh, the main things that they have been uh, uh, funding in the past. They did fund all of the uh, Clear Creek, Gilpin County. Uh, system. They funded quite a bit of the uh, systems along the, the North Corridor, so it's uh, it's a pretty good likelihood that they'll go ahead and uh, fund that system also. Okay, and then uh, Chief Ware has uh, uh, our summary of the wildland program for last year. Um, <clears throat> hopefully next year we'll get this out a little bit sooner, but I kind of wanted to put together some numbers of of what we actually did over the fire season, kind of where we went and kind of how everything got put together. Um, you know, our wildland program has really taken off over the last five years. And so hopefully at the end of the year, I'll kind of have an annual report as to what we've done. Um, in the spreadsheet, you can see we had rigs available for 142 days. Um, we ended up with 72 days committed to incidents across the department. Um, we ended up driving 7,200 miles over with uh, our engines that were out as well as uh, command vehicles and uh, we ended up having 15 members that were available for fire assignments within the uh, department. In the last page is, is kind of a, a brief synopsis of the whole year. 2014 was a relatively slow year on the front range of Colorado and as well as in, in the region. Uh, we had a total of seven wildland incidents. That was it last year uh, for less than two acres total. Most of them were lightning strikes that they just wouldn't go anywhere because of the fuel moistures. You know, we had several that would get seeded in the tree and kind of leach out, what, 20 feet from the tree well, and then they just run out of steam because even the grass was so wet, which is good. Across the country, there were 34,000 fires, uh, burned 1.7 million acres. There were 4,000 more fires across the country, but the acres that were burned, it was actually almost nearly a million acres less than the prior year. So the quantity was up but the total acreage was, was down pretty significantly. And that data is from uh, NIFSI. 
Uh, we were able to purchase two new Type 3s. You guys knew about that. One of them, we had all the warranty issues. I think a total of like 15 days out for warranty repairs. And I think close to $15,000 internationally with warranty repairs. But we finally got that handled. Um, one of them's in Station 3. The other one was here. And we finally were able to sell that Type 6 engine, which took eight months to sell or something or other. We uh, started making things available in May. Um, our first assignment was July 17th. I actually went out as a heavy equipment boss. Then uh, the, I went to Idaho and then ended up in Washington on the Carlton Complex. And uh, the next one was a Type 3 order, engine 455, parts plus three, went to Severity and Region 5, which is Northern California. Then another Type 3 order, I think that same day or the day after, for a second Type 3 for another Severity order. Um, and then 455 ended up getting assigned to the coffee complex and they ended up extending in 21 days on severity, bouncing around up there. Uh, the other engine timed out at 14 days and then that crew was swapped out and replaced by myself plus three. We also ended up with four detailers from Denver Fire to help with staffing this year, <clears throat> which is a pretty successful program. It, uh, it really made it a lot easier for us to have a little more depth in our staffing. If we couldn't get it here, we could reach out to them. And I think it also helped them. Most of those guys hopefully had fun and learned something or other. And hopefully we'll be able to continue that relationship. It's actually becoming very successful. We've had three or four other agencies ask us about helping to staff our rigs now, which is, is pretty flattering. That's a good sign of a program. Uh, last year we did do one S212 class, a chain, wildline chainsaw class. We had 22 students. Um, we have five. Five from Denver, one from Clear Creek, and two from Adams County. And the last big thing that happened last year, Captain Alex Parks finished his engine boss task book, so he was a certified engine boss, and last season was his first season acting as an engine boss on that district assignments. And that was pretty much what we did last year. Thank you. All right, any questions for the chief or the deputy chief? Hey, guys, can you hear me? Yeah. I I, um, I heard everything very very well with one exception and, and uh, it's when you were in the process of moving the phone sheet uh, talking about that one grant that ultimately would uh, help fund some additional uh, firefighters and so forth. Can you just briefly briefly uh, comment on that just a little bit? Right. So that's a that is a FEMA grant uh, for that would pay for a hundred percent of the salary and benefits uh, for any staff that we were successful in getting on the grant uh, for a okay. period of two years. For two years, is that what you said? Yes. Okay, good. That, that, that's the biggest part that I missed. Excellent. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sounds, sounds very, very interesting. Okay, thank you. At this point, Chief, are you looking? Uh, a fall. No. Yeah. At this Sorry. point, are you looking to, as you said earlier, to hire a couple of volunteers on, on a permanent basis, or are you looking perhaps for other qualifications? We, that's still up in the air. I mean, there's a couple things that we could look at with that. Uh, uh, you know, with, uh, we're seeing, um, you know, the, our fire marshal uh, activity has been, has been going back up again, mm -hmm. and we've been contracting that out. Right. So that if we did uh, refill that position, uh, that would actually have the benefit of also we get the funding for the position for two years, and, the, and at the same time, we would not be paying for uh, the contract services. Uh, so that is definitely uh, one of the one of the items that we're we're considering. The other one would be potentially adding another uh, paramedic, um, you know, to help with uh, the call volume. Yeah, of which there appears to be a lot. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, that'll take us to new business. Our first item is uh, Chief McLaughlin's employment contract. As you know, his contract will be expiring later this month. Uh, he has shown an interest to continue employment here. Um, the directors uh, have looked at his current contract, and uh, we're all interested in retaining him as the fire chief. So I'd be looking for a motion to uh, continue with that. At this point, I would like to move that directors Rogers and Schwartz negotiate and enter into a new three-year contract.
contract with Chief McLaughlin. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion carries. Greg. Yeah, Greg, did you vote on that? Did you, did you yes, vote? I did. Okay. Okay. All right. We will uh, have already been in contact with the district's uh, special district attorney, uh, and we will take that up. Uh, yes. Okay, uh, next item is review the Gerald Associates proposal for services. You want to talk about that, Chief? Sure. I, um, I did send that around to you, and uh, we actually have uh, uh, Melissa Baker here, who's with uh, uh, Gerard Associates, although I think you came as a citizen, right? But, we did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if, we have any if you have any questions, uh, Melissa may be able to, to answer them for us. Um, so the, the proposal uh, is looking at... Um, or uh, you know, presented uh, the fee for the current scope of the project, including uh, engineering uh, and um, the hazardous materials testing, essentially the asbestos testing, uh, for a total uh, fee of, of $19,680 uh, for the remodel project. And then um, the two additional fees uh, that uh, were recommended for um, reworking and upgrading the boiler system and uh, the domestic water system, uh, which uh, were um, the fees for that were a total of $3,000 if uh, we elected uh, to uh, do uh, both of those. Um, you know, in, in the discussions uh, as we were looking at the project, uh, you know, there are a number of things that, uh, that need to get done and probably you know, quite a few that are related to, you know, improving the efficiency of, of the building um, and taking care of old problems. Uh, for example, the water system, uh, you know, and reviewing our old records on that, um, you know, the, the water here runs brown and, and is not drinkable. Um, and uh, actually it has since the well was first drilled uh, and they didn't take care of it at the time, so we've been living with that. And then obviously the, the system is fairly old and uh, a lot of the components are, are um, you know, probably due to be replaced. We've run into issues recently, you know, obviously, I think the boiler has been out for a number of days now. Uh, we've had water leaks uh, out of the system, you know, the, and, then, uh, and then the basic project, you know, obviously we've got the, you know, uh, the old uh, the old part of the upstairs that really needs to just be be uh, pulled apart and, you know, and and redone. You know, we've got basically 50 years of, of uh, you know tacking on and, and cobbling together and you know 30 year old carpeting and 50 year old plumbing. So uh, you know it's a project that uh, needed to get done a long time ago. And um, you know my recommendation is that we go ahead and and start with this. We know that um, you know it may we may end up being more expensive than uh, was originally set aside for this project during this current year, uh, but there are some uh, aspects of this that would not have to be done in in a single year. Um, so we can we can essentially elect to do what we need to do uh, as uh, as we move ahead over the next several years. Chief, this is Greg. Here, real quick, I'm just wondering. Uh, given the, the ramifications and the, the somewhat unexpected, uh, you know, addition of, uh, of the water and the, the septic, you know, pieces that need to be uh, significantly addressed, if those rise in priority, do we have some things that can, uh, as you say, maybe lower in priority and potentially then be paid, not paid out, but paid over, not necessarily 2015, but say, for example, next year? I, I think that I think that we could, um, you know. I think that uh, you know we can, we can do whatever parts uh, you know make sense in the in the order that we need to do them. Uh, also, I do think that uh, you know we did end up, I believe, carrying over uh, more funds than originally estimated. I'm not sure exactly how much that is going to end up being yet. Um, yeah. Uh, so when we get final numbers, we may have a little bit 
uh, more uh, uh, room in that. Um, you know, we're you know, we basically had a, carried over a reserve of approximately a million dollars. Uh, so, you know, if we if it did make more sense to do all those projects at the same time, if it we're going to be more cost effective, uh, you know, we could bring to the board a uh, you know a proposal to increase the the budget amount for that as well. Does this require a motion? Okay. Uh, on, on the, Thank you. The board to approve this. Right. So the first step of this would be to uh, you know approve uh, entering into a uh, an agreement with. Uh, Jarreau and Associates to go ahead with the architectural and engineering work that's needed before we begin any of the projects. Now, this is for this nineteen thousand six hundred eighty dollars. You, you mentioned another three thousand. Right. If you look uh, further down, there's uh, uh, the additional services um, listed on the, yeah, on the next page. That, the uh, page additional services. I see. So this is just the this is this is the, the study on the replacing of these items. Uh, that would be the actual like uh, yeah the, the engineering that's required to yeah. do it. So basically yeah the design of yeah. you know uh, of the water system and of the uh, but replacing the existing domestic water supply new well pump and pressure tank. That's not a thousand dollars. That's just the engineering. Study. That's the engineering. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we would get from these things. We would then get uh, the design of the entire project and cost estimates of various things. I do. So you would get the construction documents that could then be sent out for bid to then find out what those costs are to do those. Items. But but you wouldn't make you wouldn't be estimating the costs or. We would be going in and talking with different contractors to find out what those costs are because we don't want to just estimate. We want to know. But will that be included in the report that will come to us? Um, I don't believe it's included in that particular proposal because the documents, there's a construction phase services from talking with contractors in the bidding process that's included in acquiring those numbers. Um, so yeah, actually. So, so, so. <laughs> it would, and I apologize. So, so when we, so when we, when we get the report, this report, will know roughly how much each stage is going to cost. You will have bids for what those, what each stage will have. Will have bids? Yeah. With the final report? That's included the services to send this out for bid with different contractors. The question um, that isn't clear to our firm is if you're looking for bids from multiple contractors or you know, how you want to go about that. And so we've included time in there for that process and we can define what that process is. But we need to look at the whole thing before we send things out to bid, don't we? Not really, no, because, uh, you know, with when the when the drawings are done, you know, if, if we bid it out, uh, you know, if it's too expensive to do a particular pro part of it, you know, we can put that off. It would probably have to re be rebid, uh, but we would have a number. Okay. Just so that we have... Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. It makes sense to me. Because we want to know in advance, although we won't know the exact cost, because there will be changes and the wonderful discoveries of things that haven't been anticipated. There, there are change orders, as, and there are always change orders in okay. remodel projects. Yeah, you can yeah. figure in some extra for that. Now. Right. You know, we're, one of the things uh, we're we're planning on having the you know uh, the materials tested for asbestos to find out. If there is any, whether or not we find out there's the asbestos there is going to be, I mean, you know, uh, a fairly significant number if to, if we have to get it out or not. So actually, Chief, that this is great. Hey, real quick, I was going to ask a question about that. Is that is that anticipated? I mean, do you have something that causes us to think we are exposed in, in this way? You know, from the, because of the age of the. A building, uh, there is a fairly good chance that uh, some of the, particularly the one, the one thing that I would suspect is the uh, um, ceiling uh, coating in the upstairs. Um, you know okay. that that would be the one thing that I think is most likely to have asbestos. Uh, you know the rest of the upstairs, 
actually stripping it down to the cinder block walls, there's not really much likelihood that we're going to run into anything else. So that's the, the one thing that I would, you know, be suspect. And, and I think that, you know, given that, you know, it was built in the 60s, I don't know when that coating was put on. I know that it was sealed at one time. Rather than testing it, they just went ahead and sealed it. Uh, but I don't know, you know, if, uh, you know, if they, you know, what, what is underneath uh, that, uh, essentially all they did was paint over it, you know. Uh, sure. So we don't know whether or not it's, uh, it's asbestos or, and we won't know until it's tested. Sure, for when, when was that sealing done? Your guess is as good as mine on that. Um, okay. we, did, we did find construction documents that were related to uh, the addition, this addition, you know, the training room addition and to the construction of the barn. And the original. And the original, those were in there too? Yep. Okay. Uh, so we've got those, but I don't think that we have records of everything that was done. I didn't read every piece okay. of paper. Okay. Do, do you know, by the way, if there's there any such thing as a grant for a census removal, particularly in a, uh, uh, you know, uh, police or a uh, fire kind of uh, uh, you know, building uh, given the nature of the service being delivered. Is, is there anything like that that you're aware of? The, there are uh, grants for modification of fire stations uh, for firefighter safety. Uh, typically those are used for installation of sprinkler systems and exhaust removal from fire engines. Um, I don't know whether or not asbestos removal would be eligible under that, uh, but that would certainly be worth uh, worth pursuing. Okay. What's uh, the time frame for completing the study? When do you want it done? <laughs> Tomorrow's fine, <laughs> <laughs> but not before ten o'clock. <laughs> you know, we're ready to get started as soon. But I mean, how long would would generally something? Um, weeks or months or no, beyond? Uh, honestly, the, uh, the, the amount of time is more on the engineering side than the architectural side. Um, six weeks? Okay. I think that would uh, probably fit into a good uh, time schedule for us. Uh, you know, that would allow us time to, you know, uh, bid and, and uh, you know, select uh, contractors. They're going to need lead time. Uh, you know, what we're hoping is that construction occurs during the summer uh, because obviously we're going to be displacing the firefighters for a while and uh, that is another thing that we're we're still working out where they're going to sleep so uh, you know um, we'll probably have to have to look at uh, you know either rental of a you know trailer or uh, you know buy a yurt or something we can <laughs> Uh, but we will have to, we, you know, we will want to try to do that as much as we can uh, during the, the warmer months to reduce the, the headache of having people, you know, out of the living quarters. And I think that's doable. Okay. Um, any other questions on it? No. Is there a motion? I'm, I'm good. Okay. I was going to move that we okay. proceed with Enter into the agreement. Or enter into the agreement with Jerome and Associates to conduct the architectural and engineering uh, study. Is there a second? Second. All those. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Anything else on that? That's all. Okay. Uh, any old business from the board? I have nothing. Nothing. Okay. I'm Cit good. Citizens' issues. Seeing none. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. At 1841. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Thank you.